Hello, guys. Good evening. Hello. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Welcome, guys. Thank you for your punctuality. Gracias por su puntualidad. I was attending the last group. Estaba con el grupo. Uh -huh. So thank you so much for your patience. Ok, muchas gracias. Espero se encuentren muy bien. Espero pues que estén por lo menos un poquito motivados para la clase de hoy. Y pues vamos a empezar because of the time, right? Por el tiempo, ¿verdad? So we are going to start now. Just let me share my screen. And there we are. Y ahí tenemos. Just let me move this for me. Ok, para los que se están uniendo, welcome guys. Bienvenidos, buenas noches. I hope you're doing well. Ok. Vamos a empezar. Y as you can see here, I have, um, I have a reflection. I have a quote. Tengo una, una pequeña reflexión nada más para empezar. This is in order for you just to motivate yourself para que no se sientan, para que ustedes sientan pues que lo están haciendo muy bien porque de hecho están avanzando muy bien y pues que nunca dejen de estar, de aprender, ¿verdad? Entonces tenemos esta, esta quote that it says, as long as you're learning, you are not failing. Mientras estén aprendiendo, no están fallando, ¿verdad? Y esta frase, esta icónica frase es de Bob Frost. He's an artist. He, he, he was a painter. So he, he was teaching um, all of the people who, all of his audience, le está enseñándole a toda su audiencia, that it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. No importa si usted comete un error, mientras usted aprenda de ese error, you are winning. Ustedes están ganando. So, we are going to start now with that beautiful reflection, okay? Now we have here, tenemos esta actividad. This activity is uh, regarding for you to speak. Esto es para que ustedes eh, participe, participen. En este caso, recuerden que esta es nuestra penúltima clase. Tomorrow will be our last class. And it means that you need to be uh, be focused on what are we learning. So here we have this activity and it, it says, who is your favorite singer? And what do you know about them? Son dos preguntas que tenemos de que, ¿Quién es su cantante favorito y qué saben ustedes de ellos? Okay. Who wants to participate? Who wants to help me? Who is your favorite singer? And who, what do you know about them? Hello? Let me see, let me start with someone. Okay, vamos a empezar con... Okay, let, déjenme ver. What about you, Teresa? Who is your favorite singer and what do you know about them? Yes. Sorry, teacher, ¿qué significa la segunda pregunta? La, pre la pregunta dice, ¿qué sabes acerca de él o ella? Acerca de ello, de su artista favor de oh, su okay. favorito, yes. Ok, my favorite singer is Porta, is live in Spain. Okay. He's a singer, the rap. Okay, he's a rap singer. Good. Very good. Oh, okay. Thank you. You can say your favorite artist is Porta and he, he lives in Spain. He's a rap singer. Very good. Thank you so much, Teresa. Let me see. Someone else? What about you, Katia? Can you tell me? Hello, Katia, are you there? Yes, teacher, I'm here. Okay, can you help me with this activity? Yes, um, yes um, but I think that I don't have a favorite singer. <laughs> oh. I, I, love, I love all the music, but I don't have a favorite. Okay, what about if you mention anyone, cualquiera? Okay, um, favorite. 
um, I remember about uh, um, uh, Sanger is like uh, Bruno Spears. Okay. Um, what I know about them, um, he she is a, a, a single mother okay. and had two children. I think I don't remember very well, but um, she had a lot problem with the drugs. Okay. Oh my goodness. Very good, Katia. Excellent. Yeah, your favorite singer that is not your favorite though. It's a, is one of your favorite singer, Brittany. She has two children and she has some problems, right? Very good, Katia. Thank you so much. Let me see. The next one is let me see. Harrison, can you tell me who is your favorite singer and what do you know about them? Uh, my favorite singer is Mora. Okay. Um, okay. He's from Puerto Rico. Uh, only that. Okay. Okay, very good. He's from Puerto Rico. That's what you know about him, right? Very good. Thank you so much, Herson. Let me see. What about you, Juan? Can you tell me who is your favorite singer? Yes, uh, my favorite singer is Ricardo Barjona. He is from Guatemala. Okay, very Only that teacher. Okay, good. Thank you so much. There we are. Now let me see who can help me with this. What about you, Maribel? Who is your favorite singer? And what do you know about them? Uh, my favorite singer is uh, Arjona, is guatemalteco. Okay. Um, I love your music. Okay, good. Very good. We have two people, two persons who likes Arjona. Good. You can say, just to mention nationality, where the seed hits watermelon. I know it sounds like like watermelon, right? But it is watermelon, así. It is guatemalteco, that's good. Good, very good, Maribel. Thank you so much. Let me see the next one, Isidro. Can you help me? Yes, teacher. Okay. My favorite singer is Jim Morrison. Okay. And he was uh, vocals of the Doors. Uh, it's a rock, rock band blues. Okay. And from from Los Angeles, California. Very good. Thank you so much. The Doors. Very good. Excellent. I like Jim Morrison too. Thank you so much, guys, for your participation. That was excellent. This is regarding to the class. Esto de hecho lo podemos relacionar a la clase, a lo que estamos a punto de ver, right? Because what do we know about, what do we know about any information? Que es lo que sabemos de cualquier información that we can express in English. That's really important. So here we have the topic for tonight. Y yo sé que ya eh, tenemos este tema como si... Es muy ya que lo hemos estado estudiando, pero cada vez se agregan unas cosas más. So here we have questions using was and was, were, and did. Preguntas utilizando was, were, o sea, el verbo to be en pasado, y did and did. So here we have one more time. Questions, WH questions with did, was, and where. Ojo que dice WH questions, right? And here we have the first one. Where did you grow up? Where did you grow up? When did you come to Los Angeles? Okay, tenemos, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I grew up in Texas. Acuérdense que cuando utilizamos el did como un auxiliar, o bueno, cuando lo utilizamos en pasado simple también, la palabra grow no la conjugamos, la dejamos en su 
eh, forma base, ¿verdad? Grow up. Entonces, como esta de acá no es pregunta y no estamos utilizando el dead, vamos a dejarla con el pasado simple, ¿verdad? I grew up in Texas. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. When did you come to Los Angeles? When did you come to Los Angeles? I came to Los Angeles in 1990. I came to Los Angeles in 1990. Why did you become a hairstylist? Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. Because I needed the money. Si se fijan, tenemos la WH question, tenemos la WH word, tenemos la palabra did, tenemos eh, el pronombre, tenemos el sujeto, and then we have the verb. El verbo en su forma base. But when it comes to give an answer to that question, cuando se trata de dar una, pre, una respuesta a esa pregunta, ahí sí utilizamos el verbo ya modificado, o sea, el verbo en pasado simple, ¿verdad? Por eso es que aquí sí cambia. ¿Se acuerdan cuando utilizábamos el did? Do you remember? ¿En qué, cuando utilizábamos el did? ¿En qué tipo de preguntas? Sorry, ¿en qué tipo de oraciones utilizábamos el did? When we're speaking about the third person and the past that do. Ok, when we are talking about, también podemos decir, um, utilizamos el did cuando hablamos, ¿verdad? En negativo y cuando hablamos en preguntas, cuando hacemos preguntas en negativo. Es por eso que cuando tenemos esta oración en afirmativo, por ejemplo, I grew up in Texas, no estamos utilizando el did. ¿Por qué? Porque no está en negativo y tampoco es una pregunta. Por eso no utilizamos, para eso son que nos sirven los verbos regulares e irregulares, ¿verdad? Que son en el pasado simple. O sea, algo que ya sucedió, ¿verdad? Where did you grow up? ¿A dónde, ¿A dónde creciste? I grew up in Texas. Crecí en Texas. So here we have another one. When did you come to Los Angeles? I came to Los Angeles in 1990. Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed, I needed the money. Se fijan, tenemos acá verbos regulares y verbos irregulares. Unos que cambia su escritura y otros que solamente se les agrega ed. Y ambos son pasado simple, ¿verdad? Now we have, how old were you in 1990? How old, ¿se acuerdan? How old, estas palabras van a ir juntas siempre. How old, como qué edad, qué edad. How old were you in 1990? ¿Qué edad tenías en 1990? I was 18. I was 18. What was your major in college? What was your major in college? It was drama. Ok, tenemos por acá. ¿Saben lo que significa major? Major significa carrera. Entonces, ¿qué significa career? Cuando hablamos de la universidad, ¿verdad? Cuando decimos major, quiere decir cuando no hemos terminado los estudios, ¿verdad? Your majors es cuando usted no ha terminado los estudios universitarios. Cuando usted ya terminó y usted se tituló, ahí sí puede decir career. My career is a teacher, as an example. Mi carrera es ser maestra, right? Entonces, en el caso de major es cuando usted no ha finalizado los estudios universitarios, o sea... Your major. What was your major in college? It was drama. Por eso dice, ¿cuál fue tu carrera en la universidad? Fue drama, ¿verdad? Porque maybe he didn't finish. How was college? It was great. Tenemos por acá, was, was. Tenemos where, que es como el was and where, el verbo to be en pasado, ¿verdad? Entonces, como dice acá, WH questions with did, que es el auxiliar, o es el verbo do en pasado simple, was, el verbo to be, where, el verbo to be en pasado simple. Todos están en pasado simple, and that's how you can identify them. Así es como las podemos identificar, ¿verdad? So here we have. 
one more time questions using was where plus um and that we have the verb be okay so those son el verbo be tenemos primero the wh word was or where plus the subject and plus the complement and please don't forget about the question mark tenemos por acá la palabra en wh que pueden ser cualquiera de esas se acuerdan de, de las palabras en wh words to make wh questions tenemos was or where que los tenemos por acá we have the subject acá tenemos los sujetos and then we have the complement que significa es un ejemplo how old were you last year how old were you last year que cuántos años tenías tú el año pasado what was your favorite TV show? Acá tenemos what, the WH word. Tenemos was, como el was or where, el verbo be en pasado. Tenemos el subject que es your. Y tenemos el complemento que es favorite TV show. And then we have the question mark. Lo mismo para esta. What was her name? How were your classes? How were your classes? Ok, now we are. Ahora tenemos using did con cualquier verbo, porque acá estamos utilizando, oops, sorry, acá estamos utilizando el verbo be, pero cuando utilizamos el did, lo vamos a hacer con cualquier verbo, ¿verdad? We have the WH word, we have plus the did, the auxiliary verb did, we have the subject, we have the verb in present, and then we have the complement. Acá tenemos, como les dije, a diferencia de cuando usamos los verbos regulares e irregulares, estos verbos los utilizamos cuando hablamos en el pasado simple, pero de manera afirmativa. Cuando utilizamos el did, lo utilizamos de manera negativa o e interrogativa, ¿verdad? Que es pregunta o de manera negativa. So here we have, where did you go last night? Where did you go last night? Si se fijan, el verb in the present simple se mantiene, ¿verdad? El verbo en el presente simple o en su forma base. Where did you go last night? Why did she become a nurse? Why did she become a nurse? When did they come to El Salvador? When did they come to El Salvador? How can you give an answer to this question? ¿Cómo podríamos darle una respuesta a esas preguntas? Do you know? ¿Ustedes saben? A la primera, ¿cómo le podríamos dar respuesta? Hello, guys. Ok, I can't hear anyone. Déjenme ver. Si tengo esa pregunta por ahí, let me see. Catherine, can you help me? Hello, Catherine. Okay. Hello, teacher. Okay, can you help me? Can you tell um, me? ¿Cómo podríamos dar la respuesta a la primera pregunta? Where did you go last night? I went to the church. Very good. I went to the church. Fui a la iglesia. Si se fijan, utilizamos verbos regulares o irregulares, ¿verdad? Excellent. Thank you so much, Catherine. What about the second one? Who wants to help me? Con la segunda, ¿cómo le podemos dar respuesta a la número dos? Why did she become a nurse? Why did she become a nurse? Porque ella se, eh, porque ella se volvió enfer una enfermera. Why did she become a nurse? She became a nurse because she liked the profession. Okay. Okay. In este caso. Como tenemos, eh, cuando usamos la pregunta, cuando lo tenemos en pregunta, 
sí podemos usar did, ¿verdad? Y entonces cuando usamos did, automáticamente el verbo se vuelve en presente simple o en su forma base. Cuando queremos decir ella se convirtió, así en afirmativo, así como lo dijo Isidro, she become a nurse, sería she became, ¿verdad? She became, porque ese ya es el verbo en el pasado simple, ¿verdad? Y cambia su escritura. She became a nurse because she liked, she liked, a ella le gustaba, the profession, ¿verdad? Very good. Now we have the last one. When did they come to El Salvador? When did they come to El Salvador? ¿Cuándo vinieron ellos a El Salvador? How can you give it an answer to that question? When did they come to El Salvador? Mm -hmm. Tenemos when, la palabra when la utilizamos cuando se nos pregunta sobre fechas o cualquier hora, ¿verdad? Podemos te responder de la forma así. They came to El Salvador. Podemos decir yesterday. They came to El Salvador yesterday. Ellos vinieron a El Salvador ayer. That's one of the ways we can say that we can answer that question. Okay, thank you so much, guys. So what are we going to do now? It says complete the word map with words from the list. Then listen and check. Voy a leerles las palabras y después vamos a colocarlas en el cuadrito que corresponde, ¿verdad? Here we have classroom, classroom. We have college, college. We have elementary, elementary. We have gym, gym. We have high, high. We have history history we have junior high junior high we have lunch room lunch room we have math math we have physical education physical education we have playground playground and we have science science So, one more time, classroom, college, elementary, gym, high, history, junior high, lunchroom, math, physical education, playground, science. So, what are we going to do? We are going to place the correct word on The chart. Vamos a colocar la palabra correcta en los cuadros, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, school days, días de escuela. We are going to place la palabra correcta para las clases, ¿verdad? What would it be? ¿Qué tipo de palabra podría ser? <coughs> si tenemos classroom, ya lo tenemos en places. ¿Por qué? Porque el classroom, o sea, un aula, es un lugar, ¿verdad? What can we say about classes? ¿Cuál de esas palabras? Ok, veamos college. College. Well, ok, let's, can you repeat? History. History goes in classes. Good. History, very good. Now, what about college? College. Is this a place? Is this a school? Or is this a class? College. Schools. Are you sure? College, remember, es como universidad, right? Es como la universidad. So, it goes in places, schools, or classes. What do you think? Places. Okay, places, right? Very good. College. Good. What about elementary? Elementary. What do you think? Elementary. Okay, it's important to mention. Les voy a dar una pista con elementary. Elementary, it's called, se le llama, um, 
por ejemplo, al nivel de, prácticamente es como una, es como primaria, es como un kindergarten elementary, pero es un nivel dentro de lo académico, ¿verdad? Entonces usted empieza, por ejemplo, en elementary, que es como antes del kinder, antes del kinder. Usually in the U.S., o en most, the most of the countries, usualmente en, el estado, en Estados Unidos o en los otros países, elementary sí se incluye, ¿verdad? Antes del kinder, acá le dicen preescolar, ¿verdad? Entonces, esto es un lugar, es un nivel escolar o es una clase. What do you think? Schools. It's schools, right? Very good. Elementary. Very good. What about gym? Gym, is this a class? Is this schools or is this a place? It's What a place. You? Very good. It's a place, gym, right? Okay, good. What about high? High. What do you think? Classes, schools, or places? School. Schools, right? Schools, because it is like a level. High, high school. Very good. History is already is already placed there. High. Junior high. I didn't get that. Could you try again? I'm sorry. One second. It's okay. Okay, what do you think? Then we have junior high. What would it be? Classes, school, or places? School. Oh, junior high, very good. Because this is a level, okay? Déjame buscar una vez más aquí. Then we have junior high. Good. What about lunchroom? Lunchroom. What do you think? Is this classes, schools, or places? Places, teacher. Good. Places, right? Lunchroom is como la cafetería, right? Para almorzar. Lunchroom. We have math. What do you think? Is this a class, schools, or places? Math. Math. Math significa What would it be? Hello? Class. Classes, right? Classes, math. There we are. Math is a class, mathematics, right? What about physical education? Physical education, is this a class, schools, or places? School. Class. Is this a class or? Class. Okay, class, very good. And we have physical education, physical education. What about playground? What about playground? Is this a place, a class, or a school? Playground. Playground means... Place. Good. Is, this is a place, right? Playground. Playground significa... Oh, sorry. Playground significa patio de juegos, ¿verdad? Patio de juegos. Excellent. And the last one is science. What do you think? Science? It's a class. Very good. Science is a class. Good. There we are one more time. Classroom, college, elementary, gym, high, history, junior high, Lunch room, math, 
physical education, playground, science. Very, very good, guys. Excelente. Ahí tenemos ese vocabulario que it may help you later. So we are going to continue with the class. Y pues por acá tenemos una lectura. What does it mean? Vamos a leer esta parte de acá, este, este párrafo. Well, vamos a leer este texto, sorry. That it is recording a singer, a famous singer. And it is Ricky Martin. So, I will need your help. Voy a necesitar su ayuda una vez más. Para leer cada párrafo, ¿verdad? Una, uno que me ayuda a leer este párrafo, otro con este, otro con este, luego con este y este último. I will need your help just to help me to read and then we are going to give it an answer. We, we are going to create questions. Vamos a crear preguntas para responder este texto, ¿verdad? So who wants to help me? Yes, teacher. Okay, go ahead, Isidro, with the first paragraph. Hasta aquí, con este perro. Ricky Martin was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, on December 24, 1971. He was always a performer as a child. He appeared appeared in television commercials and studied sing, singing. Very good. Excellent. There we are. Thank you so much, Isidro. There we are. Ricky Martin was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico on December 24, 24 1971. He was always a performer. As a child, he appeared. ¿Se acuerdan de esta palabra? Appeared. Que lleva ed, ¿verdad? Eso significa que está en el pasado. Y este, este sonido es como una, el de una D. Appeared. Appeared. In television commercials. And studied singing. Studied singing. Very good. Who wants to help me with the second one? Anyone? Teacher. Okay, go ahead, Catherine. At the age of 12, he joined the Latin boy band, Menudo. He worked hard with them and he became very well now, but he left the group after five years. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Catherine. There we are. At the age of 12, he joined the Latin boy band Menudo. He worked hard with them and he became very well known, but he left the group after five years. Very good. Who wants to help me with the third paragraph? Can we get ayudar con el tercer paragraph? Just to read. Anyone? Let me choose. Entonces, déjeme escoger. What about you, Juan? Can you help me to read? Uh, yes, teacher. Okay. Mm, at the age of 12, Here. he joined the, sorry. the Latin boy band. Juan, mm, can you read? What is the meaning menu? menu? Okay, sorry. Um, sorry, Juan. Es este de acá. Este, don't worry. Well, eh, Martin, donde dice Martin. Yes, here. Ah, ok. Ok. Eh, Mar, Martin moved to the New York City, but he didn't work for a year. He was very frustrated, so he moved to Mexico City and got uh, and got a part of a Mexican soap opera. Soon afterward, he recorded two Spanish language albums. After this success, 
he moved back to the U.S. Okay, thank you so much, Juan. Very good. Now we have Martin moved to New York City, but he didn't work for a year. He was very frustrated, so he moved to Mexico City and got a part on a Mexican soap opera. Soon afterward, he recorded two Spanish language albums. After the success, he moved back to the U.S. Very good. Thank you so much. Now, who wants to help me with this one? Con este de acá. Este es el mismo que este. Acá termina, ¿verdad? Who wants to help me with this one? ¿Quién me quiere ayudar con este de acá? Any volunteer? It doesn't matter if you already... No importa si ya, si ya, le, si ya participó, ¿verdad? You can participate again. Teacher. Yes, go ahead. Think. Back in the USA, he operated on an American soap opera and in the Broadway show, Los Miserables. Then he made his first English language album. That album was called Ricky Martin. His biggest hit, Living La Vida Loca, <laughs> was on that album. <laughs> good, very good. Yeah, I know it sounds kind of funny, right? Here we have, back in the U.S., he appeared on an American soap opera and in the Broadway show, Les Miserables. Then he made his first English language album. That album was called Ricky Martin. His biggest hit, Living La Vida Loca, was on that album. Very good. Now, who wants to help me with the last one? Anyone? Okay. Okay, thank you. Now he's famous around the world, but he still works hard and he still loves singing. As, uh, as he said to a reporter, reporter for the newspaper, USA Today, I want to do this forever. Very good, thank you so much, Cedar. So there we are. Now we have, now he's famous around the world, but he still works hard and he still loves singing. As he said to a reporter for the newspaper USA Today, I want to do this forever. Very good. Now we have, tenemos algunas palabras that we need to improve, right? Necesitamos, por ejemplo, esta palabra, performer, performer, se pronuncia performer, tenemos studied, studied, tenemos por acá palabras con ed, right? Por ejemplo, joint, worked, si, si, si se fijan suena diferente, ¿verdad? Joint, it's like a d, con una terminación de d, joint. Y tenemos worked, que es como con t al final, worked. So here we have another one, known, known. Otra que tenemos por ahí es, por ejemplo, eh, frustrated, frustrated. Tenemos otra, afterward, afterward, recorded, recorded. Tenemos success, success, ¿verdad? Tenemos appeared, appeared. Tenemos, here we have another one. Let me see. Works, works, loves. We have said. Esta palabra está en pasado simple, ¿verdad? Sabemos que la palabra en su forma base es say, say. Y este está en pasado. ¿Qué quiere decir? Bueno, no vamos a pronunciar la I. No vamos a decir said. Vamos a decir set. Nada más como set, con la de verdad, set, to a reporter, as he said to a reporter for the newspaper. Así, ¿verdad? That's, those are the words that 
mm, a little bit complicated. Y tenemos por acá una pregunta. What three cities did Ricky Marty live in? ¿En qué, cuáles fueron las tres ciudades en las que Ricky Martin vivió? O en las que vive, digamos, porque en ese entonces vivía, ¿verdad? What are three cities did Ricky Martin live in? ¿Cuáles fueron las tres ciudades o cuál, cuáles son esas tres ciudades en las que Ricky Martin vivió? Do you know? San Juan, Puerto Rico. San Juan, Puerto Rico. Good, very good. San Juan, Puerto Rico. What New else? York City. New York City. No, New York City, good. What else? And Mexico City. Very good. Okay, very good. Excellent. And then we have, ahí tenemos tres ciudades, ¿verdad? Excellent. Very good job, guys. Now that we already answered to that question, we already Ya leímos el artículo, ¿verdad? Read the article, then write a question for each answer. Ahora que tenemos esas, esas respuestas, vamos a crear preguntas para estas respuestas. How can you create an answer para esta? How can you create a question for this answer? ¿Cómo podríamos crear una pregunta para esta respuesta? In Puerto Rico is the answer. Do you remember? What can we ask? For uh, well, back? Yes? Yes, tell uh, me. Uh, no, not. Okay, no questions. Teacher, okay. podría ser when did she live? Okay, it could be that one. Let's go back to the reading. Si nos fijamos bien en el mm -hmm. lectura, Ricky Martin was born. Oh, sorry. Yes, how can you create a question? ¿Cómo podríamos crear esa pregunta? Where Después, was where, where, oops, sorry, le voy a cambiar el colorcito por acá. Okay, where? Where Ricky Martin was born. Good, where Ricky Martin was born. Excellent, very good. Where Ricky Martin was born. Very good. Now we have the next question. At the age of 12. At the age of 12. Let's go back to the reading. At the age of 12. How can you create a question for that answer? ¿Cómo podríamos crearla? Si dice por acá, at the age of 12, he joined the Latin boy band Menudo. What can we say about that? Do you know? At the age of 12. ¿Con qué palabra podríamos empezar? Cuando nos preguntan sobre, por ejemplo, cuando la, son preguntas de tiempo, edades o fechas, ¿cómo podemos empezar la pregunta? Let me help you. I'm going to place the word first. As an example, when, when. ¿Qué, cómo, ¿Qué más nos falta? ¿Qué más podemos colocar? At the age of 12. ¿Podemos utilizar was or where? ¿O podemos utilizar did? ¿Qué dice? Did. Good. Did. When. Did Ricky Martin? ¿Qué? ¿Qué podemos agregar ahí? Just for you to remember, let's go back. At the age of 12, he joined the Latin boy band Menudo. What can we say? When did Ricky Martin 
este verbo? ¿Cómo lo podríamos poner? Do you know? Fine. I hope you remember, guys. Espero que sí recuerden, ¿verdad? I hope that you... Espero que solamente estén tímidos, ¿verdad? Que no quieran participar. Pero espero que sí lo recuerden. When did Ricky Martin join? Join to the boy band menu. Así. Así la podemos dejar. When did Ricky Martin join to the boy band Menudo? At the age of 12. Porque nos pregunta cuándo, ¿verdad? Entonces, podemos colocar When did Ricky Martin join? ¿Por qué preguntamos esto? Porque no estamos hablando de algo que sea de ser o estar, de ser, del verbo to be, ¿verdad? Sino de algo que se hizo. Por ejemplo, joint. Joint. Entonces, quiere decir que tenemos eh, un verbo y si lo tenemos así y utilizamos el verbo did, significa que lo vamos a dejar en su forma base, ¿verdad? Very good. Entonces, tenemos la otra pregunta. After five years. After five years es la respuesta. So, let's look for that answer. Sé que no se ve por acá, pero la pregunta podría ser eh, ¿Cuándo dejó el grupo? ¿Cuándo dejó el grupo? ¿Cómo podríamos formular esa pregunta? ¿De cuándo? ¿Cuándo de... Ok. Did Ricky Martin left? When, when did he le vamos a poner para, para no poder no poner Ricky Martin otra vez? Bueno. When did he Left. Are you sure? Left está el verbo en pasado, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál sería el verbo en, en su forma base de left? Do you know? Sería leave. Leave. Porque acuérdense que yeah. si lleva la palabra did, el verbo va a ir en su forma base. When did he leave the boy band? Por ejemplo, boy band. When did he leave the boy band? After five years. Okay, very good. Now we have the other one. Because he was frustrated. Because he was frustrated. What would it be the, the, the question for that album? So for, sorry for that uh, answer. What would it be? Why? Por qué? Good. Why? D. Excellent. Let me just let me look for the text. Okay, there we are. Why did, did Ricky Martin Ricky Martin Oops, sorry. Why did Ricky Martin move 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 Okay, to move. Move. Go to Mexico Okay, let's go back just very, very quickly. Okay, it says Martin moved to New York City because he didn't work for a year. He was very frustrated. Okay. ¿Qué podemos decir? ¿Qué podemos decir? Okay, let me write it one more time. Okay. Move to your... To... Okay, we can say, why did Ricky Martin move to New York City, okay? Move to New York City. Why did Ricky Martin move to New York City? Because he was frustrated. Very good. Y pues ahí tenemos, tenemos where Ricky Martin was born. Y where, uh, where sorry, where Ricky Martin was born in Puerto Rico at the age of 12. Tenemos la pregunta. When did Ricky Martin join to the boy band Menudo at the age of 12? When did he leave the boy band after five years? Why did Ricky Martin move to New York City? Because he was frustrated. Very, very good, guys. So what do we have here? Let's do this. Let's move to the next one. Hasta aquí. ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? 
Any question? Any doubt? No, teacher. No. Okay. So what are we going to do? Vamos a ver. Eh, voy a ver si nos queda tiempo para escuchar esta conversación. Si no nos queda tiempo, yo se las envío al, al grupo, ¿ok? En este caso, I'm going to explain you something regarding verbs. Les voy a explicar esto de acuerdo a los verbos, ¿verdad? Tenemos acá, como yo, as I mentioned before, we have two different, uh, two types of verbs. Tenemos dos tipos de verbo. Tenemos, eh, los más conocidos buenos son los verbos dinámicos y los verbos estáticos. Los verbos dinámicos son aquellos que requieren movimiento de nuestro cuerpo para realizarlos. As an example, eat, to eat, comer, drink, to drink, walk, caminar. ¿Por qué? Porque requieren que movamos alguna parte de nuestro cuerpo, ¿verdad? Puede ser otro, run, correr. To run, we need our, our legs. Para correr necesitamos nuestras piernas, para mover nuestras piernas. Entonces, eso se les llama verbos dinámicos o verbos de acción. ¿Y ¿Cuáles son los verbos estáticos? Static verbs. Son todos aquellos que no requieren movimiento alguno, ¿verdad? As an example, it could be about emotions. Puede ser sobre estados emocionales o mentales. It could be sensations, sensaciones. We could be about communication and another state. Now we have here the first one, estados emocionales o mentales, emotionals. We have believe. El, eh, ese verbo no requiere movimiento, ¿verdad? Simplemente creer es un verbo estático. Believe, creer. Tenemos dislike, disgustar. Tenemos doubt, dudar. Tenemos imagine, imaginar. We have the verb know, saber, like, gustar, love, amar, hate, odiar, prefer, preferir, realize, notar o darse cuenta, realize. Now we have sensations. Sensations appear, aparecer o parecer, hear, oír. See, ver, seem, parecer, smell, oler, sound, sonar, taste, saber o probar, ¿verdad? De sabor. States es probar, ¿verdad? Pero de probar, por ejemplo, comida o bebidas. Something that it has a flavor. Now we have communication. Communication, agree, estar de acuerdo. Astonish, astonish, asombrar, deny, deny, negar, disagree, no estar de acuerdo, disagree, impress, impresionar, mean, significar, please, complacer, promise, prometer, be, cuando tenemos otros, otros tipos de estado, be, que es ser o estar, belong, pertenecer, concern, concernir o preocupar, ¿verdad? Concern, consist, consistir, contain, contener, cost, costar, depend, depender, deserve, merecer, deserve. Now we have here another ones. Estos son también emocionales o mentales, ¿verdad? Recognize, recognize, reconocer, remember, recordar, suppose, suponer, understand, entender, want, querer, wish, desear. Now we have another one in communication, satisfy. Satisfy, satisfacer, surprise, sorprender. Now we have another state, include, incluir. We have involve, involucrar, lack, faltar. Faltar en el aspecto de, por ejemplo, um, we have a lack of material. Tenemos falta de material. Eso es faltar, ¿verdad? 
en, en cuanto a esa palabra, lack. We have matter, importar. Y este no es de importar, es un ejemplo, no es de importar objetos, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, import significa importar, pero de importar de un lado a otro, ¿verdad? Pasar de un lado a otro, pero matter es de importar, es algo de sentimental, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, y cuando usted dice what's the matter o qué sucede o it doesn't matter, no importa, así. We have need, necesitar. We have owe, que es deber de deuda. Por ejemplo, I owe you money, te debo dinero, I owe you. Tenemos own, tener, por ejemplo, I own three cats. Yo tengo tres gatos, o yo soy dueño de tres gatos, o yo poseo tres gatos. Y possess, que es poseer, ¿verdad? Esto en cuanto a belongings, pertenencias. Possess, poseer. So, hasta aquí. Do you have any question, guys? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? Anything? Any doubt? Okay, if you don't have any question, uh, this is a reminder. Este es solo un recordatorio, ¿verdad? Que hasta acá llega el contenido de, esta, de la sección número 5, ¿verdad? Lo hice hasta acá porque mañana vamos a tener un recap de todo lo que hemos visto en el módulo, todo lo que hemos visto en el módulo. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que a partir de hoy usted puede iniciar su examen final. Por eso lo adelanté, por eso lo hice con tres clases de contenido y una de eh, retroalimentación que va a ser mañana. Va a ser, vamos a ver todos los temas previos y pues desde ahora usted puede empezar el examen final. ¿Por qué? Porque ya tenemos todo, ya abarcamos todo el contenido para ese examen final. Así que esperaría que lo puedan mandar lo antes posible lo puedan eh, terminar en la plataforma lo antes posible y así estemos más tranquilos. Y pues eso sería todo, chicos. If you don't have any question, eso sería todo para esta clase de hoy. I hope you can be, espero que sí puedan mañana atender la clase, ya que es la última, pero como va a ser con full information, por si usted faltó, pues vamos a tratar de cubrir todas las preguntas que tengan. So that's it for tonight class, guys. I hope you have a good night and thank you for your attention. Gracias por su atención. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Thank you, thank you. Good thank night. you for the class. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs>